we're ready from our end. Go ahead. All right, if it's uh, four o'clock, we will call the April 13th Architecture Review Board meeting to order. Uh, we are doing this as primarily a call-in meeting and uh, experimenting with technology we haven't really worked with before. So for any of the public tuning in, please bear with us as we deal with any potential technical difficulties. Uh, and Chad, I believe we uh, need to do a roll call to confirm we've got everyone and uh, a quorum. Joe Clark? Present. Alderperson Savalio. I am here. Jerry Jones. Here. Richard Lindy. Here. Pam Langan. Bob Heimrell. Here. And Charlie Wig. Here. We have a quorum. Great, thank you very much. I just have to remember to unmute myself. Um, and now we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, if everyone can stand and face the flag that's in their room or face east or some proximity thereof. And uh, so we will try to do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance together without too much feedback. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, well, that was interesting. <laughs> um, for the board members, uh, item 1.3, if we can identify any potential conflicts of interest for today's meeting. Not hearing any, I am assuming there are none. Uh, and we will move on to item 2.1, approval of the minutes from the March 23rd meeting. Make a motion to approve as presented. Second. That was a motion from Jerry and a second, was that Bob? Marcus. And Chad, do we need to do a roll call vote for this or can we do a voice vote? We do, so Joe Clark. Aye. Alderperson Savalio. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Richard Lindy. Aye. Pam, uh, Robert Heimrell. Aye. Charlie Wig. Aye. Motion passes. Great. Thank you very much. That brings us to item 3.1, the proposed exterior remodel of Sheboygan Area Credit Union at 1707 Indiana Avenue. Uh, if the team from uh, Hogmuller can do some introductions, and then I believe uh, Tom will be guiding us through the images while Mike makes a presentation. Hi, uh, this is Mike Muller uh, from Hawk Muller Architects, uh, and uh, Tom Lawrence is uh, with us as well. And I'm happy to give uh, a walkthrough. I don't, I don't have the benefit of uh, having the live image that Tom sees right now, uh, but I'm basically going to tell the story as far as what we are proposing. Um, can everyone hear me? Okay. It sounds good. Thank you. Good. Okay. Good. Um, um, I'm going to actually, I guess, just kind of a quick overview. You said you're on the uh, aerial image? I am on the aerial image. Okay, just to kind of clue everyone in on where this is, uh, the top edge of that image would be Indiana Avenue. Uh, the main entry of the building is uh, on the north, kind of the northwest corner. And I guess the main part of this project is we're looking to uh, we've got a building that, that the exterior of it is very, very dated and very weathered. And we are looking to uh, improve the exterior appearance of the building. The other issue is the existing entry is really um, not, not uh, the most visible. So we are looking to do a small addition where the existing entrance is to actually make the entrance. Oh, 
Uh, that sounds like you. <laughs> Sorry, that's structural engineer. Okay, tell the structural guy to wait. <laughs> uh, so step step one of the, the uh, I, I guess the main part of this is to reclad the entire existing building to, to kind of bring it more to date. Uh, part of, the other part of it is to uh, provide an entrance that's more visible. And lastly, there's a few site adjustments that we're making to just make it more user friendly and to help beautify it as well. Um, I'm just going to flip to the uh, site plan. Yep. Okay. Um, there's a small area that's kind of post shade in the front, and I guess Tom, I'm referring to the addition. Just to give everyone an idea of how small it is, it, I think we're talking maybe 300 square feet um, in terms of added floor space. Um, we're going to be redoing the entrance uh, walkway right in front. And as part of that, we will also be relocating the accessible parking directly across. Uh, reason for that location, in case anyone's curious, is uh, we just feel it's a safer access point uh, for any patrons using those spaces, as opposed to having it next to the entrance. Uh, the difference being if it was next to the entrance, people would be having to walk behind parked cars, whereas where we're proposing it, it's a direct shot into the entry. Uh, the other item, and Tom, I'm moving toward the north, uh, bearings here, northeast corner of the property. Uh, there's an existing parking stall, stall that we would like to remove and um, replace with landscaping. The Going down from that, there's a small narrow island that we are proposing to remove, replace with paving and stripe it. And there's actually two islands that we're showing that, that happening web. The purpose of doing that is uh, to, to make the snow plowing uh, more accommodating. And in, in a staff level meeting that we had, the larger of the two islands next to the driveway, there was some concern expressed with that being removed. And as of right now, the last I had heard is that that will be staying. Um, and Steve, if, if you're there, if you want to chime in, please, you know, please do. Um, going further down, uh, there's a low part of the parking lot that's on the east side that does not drain that well. And we are going to be working with the city to put in a storm inlet at that point tied to the storm system out on uh, 17th Street. Uh, lastly, lastly, the south side of the property, there's an alley which is in disrepair. And the credit union would actually like to uh, repave that. And we will be working with the city to repave it per city specs. Uh, and then on the south side of the building, we're going to be adding some additional landscaping uh, to, to improve the appearance of that side. Right now, I believe it's mostly all gravel. And that's it for the site. Unless, Tom, is there something you're seeing that I'm not? No, I think, I think that's about it, Mike. Okay. Uh, take a look at the floor plan. And there's really not too much to see on this, but uh, I, I guess you just point out the new entrance. Uh, instead of being, instead of facing the west, it will be facing uh, Indiana Avenue towards the north. Uh, it'll be a wider entry, double door entry. Uh, there's an existing night depository box up in that corner, which will get relocated. And our goal is to relocate it to drive through lane number one. Uh, I don't know if I want to point this out or not, but, well, I will. We're looking at it. Uh, there's a beautiful rooftop unit currently on the roof, visible from, that was sarcasm, visible from uh, Indiana Avenue. And we are going to be removing the rooftop unit as part of kind of the beautification of the exterior. And it's going to get replaced with a furnace that will get tucked into a new closet. And Tom, if you want to kind of designate that so everyone knows where that is. And that's really it for the floor plan. I'm going to switch to the next uh, next sheet. 
Uh, and, and I guess you know, we, the next sheet here, we're looking at some before, some, some existing photos, and then some uh, renderings of what we're proposing. And what I guess the story I'll tell on this is much of the exterior is uh, some very weathered wood siding. Uh, there's some areas where I can actually push my finger into it. Um, what we're looking to do is remove all of the existing wood siding right down to the studs. And then we're going to reskin it. And the areas that are between the windows will be reclad in stone material. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the areas below the windows. And also there's a wide uh, fascia band up top. Uh, that's going to be reclad in a pre-finished panel. And right now we're looking at a metal system and it has sort of a kind of a rust color to it, for lack of a better description. Uh, and I believe on the next sheet. Oh, and you know what? I, and I forget. There was, I had actually emailed a photo of the materials. I don't know if everyone has had a chance to see those yet. That's attached. I'll, I'll assume so, but if not, right. what we have shown on sheet two is actually very close uh, to those colors in that plan. Um, backing up to sheet one, uh, the new entrance, uh, what we're doing with that is we are actually elevating that portion of the building, uh, more of a tower effect with a flying cornice. Uh, some high glass uh, over over the entry doors with a new canopy, and I am I'm sorry I got distracted here. I guess back back to the exterior recladding that that theme of the stone with the metal uh, pre finished panels rather. That we are going to carry all the way around the entire building. It's not just on the front. It's not just on the two street sides. It'll be all four sides. Uh, and the existing canopy support columns uh, currently are, I believe, concrete. Those will also get clad in a combination of stone and pre finished panel. Uh, new signage. Uh, we are proposing a wall-mounted signage directly over the uh, entrance. <clears throat> Tom, do you want to add anything else? I, I feel like I'm glossing over something, but I think I've also covered it, too. There we go. The... Um... We've got some, uh, Mike mentioned the flying cornice. We're adding some, some brackets uh, for some uh, visual support. They aren't structural, but they would they kind of speak to the structure. Um, we're also talking about, where did we leave, Mike, the, uh, the, the coping? Um, oh, you know, I guess what we're, what we're presenting on the submittal is we're showing kind of a, a dark green uh, coping over the entire uh, new new fascia band as well as the flying cornice. Uh, it would be a color in keeping with uh, the, the credit union's logo and their color. But as, as we're looking at the material samples, we're, we're taking a step back and we're almost thinking we may want to reserve that green coping just for the flying cornice at the new entry. And then where the wide fascia band occurs, perhaps instead of green, we might want to use more of a bronze coping uh, that, that would match the actual window colors, the existing window colors to remain. Just so we're not introducing, you know, another color into the mix. I, I personally think that would be an improvement, but I guess I'm, I'm willing to hear what uh, all the board members think as well. And I'm, I'm currently showing the second sheet that has um, some materials indicated on it. Those aren't the, the actual photographs of the materials um, that we would be using. And I'm trying right now, let me attempt to uh, 
get photographs of the actual materials. Everybody should have those, though, I think. Yeah, and um, that was another attachment in the board docs document that uh, they had provided some pictures of the actual samples. And to those who are here, I got some pictures here to take a look at. All right, uh, this is Joe Clark. Uh, thank you for that presentation. I think we'll hop in with questions from the board. Uh, first, I'd like to say it's a huge improvement to the building, so uh, it's much appreciated. And I think we're probably just gonna be talking about smaller details. Um, can you clarify for me the uh, existing window frame system? Uh, I believe the note said that was staying. Yeah, the uh, existing window frames are uh, aluminum uh, frame, kind of a commercial grade aluminum frame. Uh, those would be left to remain. And on the photographs that are in our package, it looks as if those are a dark green finish. Is that correct? No, I believe what they did there is And Tom, I, I think I'm accurate in saying this, but I believe the window frames um, are actually a bronze color. But yeah, I'm, in some I'm, areas they, they applied, they actually applied a wood trim over them. And I that have, might be the green you're saying. I have some closer up images that I can share if, if you just give me a second. Yeah, I just zoomed in on the, the board photographs. Uh, they're, they're green there but that does look as if it may just be the verticals. The horizontals may be a dark bronze behind that, so it yeah. could be, as you yeah. say, I, just a trim element over the top. Yeah, and that, in fact, one of those trim elements is where I was able to push my finger into, so I do know that's, uh, <laughs> that's just a face applied trim. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Um, you can see that there's a currently like a dark green wood trim around um, a bronze uh, uh, window frame, but the intention would be that the wood, what we replace it, the wood with would be the same color as the, as the storefront. So then to your question about the, the green and how extensive to use that, uh, complementing the, uh, the signage and logo, is my thought would be uh, it's a nice subdued color scheme with the bronze trim and the, the rusty finish uh, metal panels with the stone. Uh, the green in the, rent, the elevation views seem to be a little overpowering, but maybe just keeping it focused at the entry piece would be my preference, but uh, certainly hear from the rest of the board on that. The only other question I had was on the monument sign that's shown in one of the renderings, but doesn't appear on the site plan. Is that part of this project? I can speak. Uh, oh, no. I, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but the monument sign isn't having any work done to it, I believe. Right, it's, our, it's a pre-existing sign, yeah. and it just wasn't shown yeah. on the uh, on the site plan, but it's there. It's already there. Yeah. Yeah. I have okay. I had missed that on Google Earth. So perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that um, sign was that sign was that? Uh, went to plan commission maybe about a year ago. It was uh, uh, probably a fifteen foot three sided sign, and so they lowered it down to that monument sign with the electronic reader board. So that sign is presently there, and the site uh, the site improvements that were originally talked about take those yellow lines that you can see in the photo and it make that into additional green space. Yep, that will be very nice. Great. Other questions from from the board? Uh, this, this is Richard Lindy. I, I'm very pleased with the design that uh, they've come up with. I, uh, I haven't heard the word beautification since Lady Bird Johnson talked about beautification of our highways. <laughs> <laughs> But you've done a very good job of making this a beautiful corner, and I congratulate you. 
Thank you. This is Bob Heimerl. I would agree with Dick on that as well. It looks great. Um, I agree with Joe too. I think I'd prefer the dark bronze coping over the green. If I understood you correctly, Joe, um, for the bulk of the building. Yes. I do have a question though. You're keeping those existing windows. Is that what you said? But the green will be That's coming. Correct. The green will be coming off of that. You, you said you'd take it off? That's correct. Okay. Um, I'm just curious how that's going to work, but if you think you can do it, great. Well, that the big question we have is how the, uh, the wood trim is actually fastened. Right. And I didn't see any visible fasteners, so I don't know if they actually use like some PL 400 or something, but <laughs> the goal is to pull off the wood because it, it is really bad. Um, and then we, we know in fact, the aluminum frames are in good shape. Um, but until we dig into it, we don't know the specifics about how it's going to come off. Yeah. Good luck. I hope it goes well. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it comes off really easy. <laughs> yeah. This is Joe Clark again. I would just uh, say to that point, uh, as you do that demolition, take off that green trim, uh, depending on what you find under there. If there are uh, different finish approaches needed to make sure there's a nice, new, clean seeming finish to those existing frames, mm -hmm. uh, please make sure that you keep staff up to date on those. Uh, it, it may be that you'd need to come in with something else if they need tidying up. Other comments, questions from the board? This is Jerry Jones. Um, just wanted to point out, I think the two biggest things I, I had as a concern were addressed during the presentation. One was the visible uh, utility on top of the building, which is going to be nice to get rid of. Uh, but the second was the treatment on the south side of the property because we're hugging right up against the neighbors there. I was just hoping, uh, maybe I missed it, I apologize, but if you could walk me through what the treatment on the south side of the building is going to be again. Yeah, um, for starters, the actual alley paving, uh, which is really pitted up in, at this point, that's going to get all cleaned up and repaved. Um, but the area between the edge of the alley and, and the south side of the building, uh, currently it's uh, mostly all gravel. And what we're proposing to do is put a landscape bed in uh, immediately next to the building for about half the distance between the building and the alley. And the other remaining half would be uh, paved. And the purpose of that little paved area is uh, primarily for snow storage in the winter. Um, but I guess the end result is what we're, we're doing is we're softening that backside with landscaping and we're cleaning up the paving. Great. Thank you for that. I think it just helps set the table for the rest of that corner moving forward. So I appreciate okay. that. All right. Anyone else? If not, I would certainly entertain a motion at this point. I'll make a motion to approve as presented with the following changes. Uh, metal C to be a bronze color to match the, um, the existing uh, entryway door color, um, except for in the new entryway area uh, where it is highlighting the green color. Does that make sense to everyone? It did to me. Is anyone not clear on that? So, so the coping, um, the the coping at the the cornice at the entry stays green. Everywhere else, it, it is a color to match the the dark bronze. I'd be okay with that. Okay. And, and I believe that was how you had worded your uh, your motion, Marcus. Was there a second to that? I'll second. Jerry, I'll second. 
Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to the roll call vote. So I believe on this one, rather than our usual yeas and nays, uh, in turn, is it uh, as your name is called, please indicate either a yay or a nay in support of that motion. Joe Clark. Yay. Alderperson Savalio. Yay. Jerry Jones. Yay. Dick Lindy. Yay. Pam Langen. Yay. Robert Heimrell. Yay. Charlie Wig. Yay. Seven or whatever the number is, all passed. Excellent. That's okay, Chad. It's that new math, buddy. <laughs> hey, Joe, can I make one well, comment? Thank you very much. Please do. Um, just wanted to um, say thanks to uh, Bob Wallace, sir, from uh, Sheboygan Area Credit Union and, and Mike Miller. Um, those guys came in and talked to staff and really you know, presented something that was a real nice improvement to that area. Was nice to have a conversation that was an easy conversation to say, yes, we want this. And um, this a project, just like the uh, former Clark Station on Shell, uh, Indiana, Indiana Avenue's uh, uh, corridor that we're looking to improve. And, and this business certainly uh, starts the enhancement of that section of the corridor, uh, corridor so we really appreciate it. Thank you to, uh, to all of you for that. Uh, any other comments from the board? Otherwise, we will uh, take uh, a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I had one more comment, Joe. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if everyone knows or not, but um, Ray Hain, who had served on the Architectural Review Board, um, saw an obituary that he had passed away on Wednesday, April 8th. So just wanted to uh, uh, acknowledge Ray's participation on our committee. And he was uh, a good man and a friend and just wanted to acknowledge his uh, uh, participation and his help in many of the projects that we've been recently dealing with. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, he'll he'll be missed. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, looks as if our next meeting is scheduled for uh, Wednesday, April 29th, which is a non-typical day. Steve, do you want to talk to that point? Yeah. Um, what typically happens is, as everyone's aware, the election just took place. And so there's a couple of meetings that uh, the old council finishes up and then the new council is brought on board. And at the um, third Monday in um, April, the committees are uh, selected and older persons are placed on certain committees. And so the reason for the meeting on that Wednesday is the um, uh, Council doesn't meet till that Monday evening when we typically meet, so they wouldn't have made the appoint appointments official. So we changed that meeting to that Wednesday so that the appointees are all official and then we can conduct business. Perfect, thank you for that summary. Uh, and if there are no other comments or uh, pieces that people want to add, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Pam seconded it. And Chad, do we need a roll call vote on this one too? No, all eyes is fine. <laughs> all right, aye. all in favor, please signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> then we are officially adjourned. Thank you all very much. And thanks for uh, bearing with the technology. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks. Bye. All right, thank you.